today I'm gonna show you how to knit this beautiful Raglan sweater with German short row neck shaping. Let's get started. First of all, please check my description box for all the details. I include pretty much everything you need, such as written pattern. Okay, today I am going to show you how to knit this beautiful Raglan sweater with German short row neck shaping. Okay, what do you mean by neck shaping? As you can see, the back piece is about two inch higher than front piece, which means you need more fabric, only back piece. So this time, only back piece I am going to add. The German short row starts in the center of back piece and knitting back and forth like that. So the center part will be more raised. While knitting back and forth, you will pass the raglan line and you need to increase stitches around that line. You know what I'm saying? And the increasing is repeating of two rows. Row number one, increasing. Row number two, no increasing. And because we need in flat, there are right side and wrong side, meaning you will increase on right side and wrong side. A bit confusing, but it's worse to learn. And next key point for this tutorial is connecting the sleeve and sleeve shaping. Slowly and evenly, you need to decrease towards to the wrist. First, you have to knit your swatch and take a gauge. And we have to make a plan, which is a little math. All right, so I'm going to jump into my math template. Math gauge template. If you do have my template, it's easy. You don't really have to worry about doing math by yourself. However, if you don't have my math template, you have two options. You got to do your math all by yourself manually, but it's just a ratio math. And I include how to do it in my written pattern. So if you're good at the math, you can do it by yourself. And second option is to buy this template. It's quite useful. And I include the link in my description box. It's only seven Canadian dollar. So if it's US, probably five US dollars, something like that. So it's really up to you. But if you want to buy this, I have separate a tutorial video how to use this template so you can actually watch that and make sure you are fully understand okay anyway uh, let's use the upgraded version okay uh, my swatch and gauge was four inch by four inch and I have 19 stitches and 23 rows with a 4 by 4 inch uh, swatch. And right here, number 4, your gauge. I'm going to put all the information here. 4 inch and 4 inch. And I have 19 stitches and 23 rows. This is my gauge. Okay, so you have to put your number here. And um, my actual neck size is 12. And I'm going to start with neck opening 24 inches kind of double it okay so because i don't really like you know smaller tight neck and i'm gonna use the uh, you know two by two ribbon for neck rib and it looks shrink a bit so 24 to start would be good number so the cast on is stitch number so Let's do it right here. Number 12, your width. Okay, so I'm going to put 24 right here. 
And there you go, 114. And I want you to pick the cast on number with multiple of 12. So 114 is multiple of 12. You don't know. So come this side. This is super easy. Multiple of, I said 12, so 1, 2, enter. And there you go. These are the number of multiple of 12. So you have to find me at the number uh, close to 114, which is right here, right? And look, 108 or 120, okay? Which means 114 is not multiple of 12. So I usually go with the bigger number for just in case, but it's really up to you. Or you can actually pick, you know, 144, okay? It's really up to you. So my cast on number is 120. That's how you find out, okay? Again, if you don't have this template, you have to do your math. The way you think is, okay, four inch, you have 19 stitches. What about with your, you know, uh, desired length, width, okay? So that's how you kind of find out ratio math. And... Um, one more thing I want you to actually uh, find out the uh, number, which is, uh, you don't need it right away, but I want you to think, okay, which is about the uh, German short row. How much you want to raise for the uh, back piece? Usually, uh, inch to two sometimes, you know, the people like, quite higher so maybe I should say inch to three but I always raised about two inch only back piece that's plenty okay so uh, and I want to find out about how many rows would that be with some two inch which is actually quite easy you know this is four inch height and 23 so two inches half so 23 divided by two is 12 point something right or 11 point something so but i'm gonna do it number eight your height i would like to you know raise about two inch so i'm gonna put two and enter 11.5 there you go and this uh, German short row number because you gotta go back and forth back and forth has to have even number so I'm gonna go with uh, 10 12 or 14 somewhere around there please remember that and I actually picked number 12 okay and I will talk about that number later okay so let's move on to actual knitting Cast on 120 or multiple of 12. I actually made 121, one stitch extra, because I am going to lose one stitch when I connect both ends. Okay, so if you want to do that, you have to make one extra stitch. And when I connect, you have to make sure you're on right side. This is wrong side. It's a little bit different, you know, texture. So you must connect on facing to right side. Okay. So again, I'm going to lose one stitch right away here. So slip one stitch purl wise from left needle onto right. And then behind that slide stitch, Pass that slide stitch over. Then now you connect. There we go. So my number is 120, which is multiple of 12. I put the uh, begin marker and start making rib. My rib is 2 by 2, so repeat of knit 2 and purl 2 until your desire length. I actually needed it 11 rows, about 1.5 inch. You really have to be careful on first 
row because from the uh, second row you just knit over knit and purl over purl stitch so if you run the first row your ribbon is all ruined okay so here it comes I again did the 11 row and which is about 1.5 inches it's really up to you if you want to have the longer rib please go ahead okay now I am going to knit one row with one size bigger needle and while you're knitting add in all kinds of the uh, marker first of all the uh, side marker the whole stitch divided by two and split in half that side is back piece you know was the uh, the begin marker and obviously the other side is front piece this one is easy just cast on number divided by two and i want you to make sure the begin marker has to be center of your back piece now raglan marker you have to find out the uh, base number cast on number divided by six my cast on number is 120 divided by six is 20. my base number is 20. so uh, back pieces and front pieces base number times two okay and sleeves are uh, base number times one for each side so the begin marker has to be center of the uh, back piece so you count e each way 20 20 and besides the uh, back piece is sleeves so only base number times one for both sides and rest of them should be base number times two same as back piece and that's the front piece so again you change the uh, needle to one size up and then knit one row and adding those markers okay so again uh raglan marker and side marker okay now it's done and i just want to make sure with you how i did it first of all the pink one that's my biggie marker and that's gonna be center of the back piece and purple and red clip-on marker that's gonna be my side marker split in half my stitch count total is 120 divided by 2 which is 60 okay so the back piece okay you just have to count 30 stitch towards the left and right the to makes it 60 stitch and rest of them should be front stitches and now i want to talk about the uh, little guys okay that's the uh, raglan marker okay the raglan marker you need to have a base number right do you remember the uh, stitch count divided by six my base number was 120 divided by six and 20 okay back piece front piece same number base number times two so has to have a 40 stitches total so for the back piece 20 and 20 total are 40 and i put raglan marker and next section is both side sleeves okay base number times one and rest of them are front piece which is base number times two okay that's how i put all uh, the uh, markers and now i want to make sure about one thing the uh, the regular marker this side is orange the right side and left side is blue and rest of them are actually blue why i use orange marker for this side because again when i actually do the uh, german short row Okay, I'm gonna pass those two raglan marker when I go back and forth, back and forth. And then I wanna make sure if you're passing blue marker, you have to increase on right side, which is knitting side. But 
after that, I turn the work and then kneading towards to the orange marker, which is pearl side, but you still have to increase. You know what I'm saying? Because first row, increase, and second row, not increase. So obviously, the right side and left side is different, you know, side you're kneading. You know what I'm saying? It's really hard, but I will show you. Okay, so don't worry about that. And now, you know, some people say it's too complicated, right? Then you can actually add short row first and then start increasing. And with this sweater, that's how I did it. Okay, because a lot of people get confused, but now, you know, I knit many sweaters, so people get used to it. So can you see this back piece? The raglan increasing starts middle of nowhere because I add short row first. That's the short row fabric. You know what I'm saying? So the back raglan line is kind of, you know, in the middle of nowhere. So the, uh, the short row back and forth, back and forth, forget about the increasing, right? And whenever you finish the uh, short row, I start increasing. That's why increasing starts right there. But again, the front piece I haven't touched anything. So the front piece raglan increasing starts right underneath of the neck rib. Either way, okay, either way. I don't really care, but if you want to knit perfectly, you know, I don't know what's perfect, but, you know, uh, same front and back, but the back I want to raise a little bit. Can you see? Can you tell? The This one, I did the German short row and increase at the same time. So the raglan line starts for front and back, both side, you know, starts right underneath of the neck rib. Looks a little bit better. So now let me talk about how to hit your target height. Do you remember when I did the uh, math? I told you I want to raise about two inch for the back piece. And then that two inch height is about 12 rows. You know what I'm saying? Go back and forth 12 times, right? So um, you just want to raise only back piece. So back piece stitch count divide by how many rows you want to increase. So for me, 60 back piece stitch count divided by 12 rows that I want to increase. The back piece stitch count, 60, okay, divided by 12 rows that I want to increase is 5. So my German short row target uh, base number is five. That's you have to do. You know, first, how many height you want to add for the uh, back piece, two inch, three inch, whatever, and figure it out how many rows adding. And back piece stitch count divided by target row count is your German short row base number. For me, five stitches. So I kind of want to move five stitch either way. Okay, so let's start. So German short row number one, right side towards to blue marker. Okay, and my key number is five. So knit five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, and five. And then now turn the work. Now you're on wrong side and row number two. Okay? Keep the yarn front. YF means yarn front. Okay? Slip one stitch purlwise like that and tug the working yarn towards to back to create kind of fake two stitch. Can you see? Once you pull the working yarn towards to back, now you have two stitch. I call it fake two stitch or fake double. Okay? And put the uh, marker. You don't have to, but you better do if especially never done German show roll. And now you're on the wrong side, which is pearl side. So working on front and start making pearl towards to begin marker. Okay, go back to begin marker. And now you pass begin marker, okay, and the key number five kicks in. Pearl five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Both has to be same. So turn the work and Row number three, knit inside, okay? Yarn front and slip one pearl wise, and it's one stitch, right? And pull and tug the working yarn towards the back to create two stitch, two fake stitch, I should say. And put the marker in, and now it's right side and knitting side. So keep the working yarn back and then start knitting. Okay? And then knit back to begin marker. But I'm going to pass that begin marker now. There we go. And knit until the marker. So after the marker, what are you waiting for? That double fake two stitch which you're going to do German short row knit it together. Okay? So there you go. Remove the marker and there's the uh, double fake stitch, right? And those two stitch knit it together because you're on right side, knitting side. There you go. Double fake. There you go. And now the key number kicks in, okay, after the knit two together, knit five. So you kind of have to move five stitches every time. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and turn. This is end of the row number three. And row number four, keep the working yarn front, slip one stitch purl wise and tug the working yarn towards the back to create the uh, fake double stitch and put the marker in and then this is wrong side so starting purl there you go go back to you know uh, begin marker past that and knit until the other side of the uh, yellow marker. Yellow marker indicates next stitch will be double, fake double stitch, which you have to, you know, decrease. And this time you're on the wrong side, so obviously, German short row, purl two together right here, okay? So this is the reason why I use the uh, yellow marker to make sure which one is the uh, fake double stitch. The, some people don't like the, uh, the JSR because you don't know which one 
is the double stitch sometimes. Anyway, after the, the uh, purl two together, I made five purl, then turn. And you just have to repeat row number three and row number four. I'll show you. S slip one purl and tuck to create the uh, fake double stitch. Place the marker and keep knitting because you're on right side, knitting side. And now you knit until the other side of the yellow marker. And now German short row, knit two together. And then after knit two together, knit five. So obviously, you know, the reason why I knit five after the knit two together or purl two together, that's because my German short row base number is five. Do you remember how I, you know, did the uh, math? So obviously, if your the number is seven, you just have to knit seven or pearl seven. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so um, now I'm on the uh, row number three. So knit until the uh, yellow marker, remove it, and this is fake double stitch, and knit two together. And why, you know, you have to do this because every time you turn, you create a little gap because you don't complete the row. You know what I'm saying? So you create the fake double stitch and then decrease. So stitch count should be same. Oh, I made a mistake. I, um, I was supposed to slide one, but I tried to make a pearl. So I did it again. And slide one stitch, tug the working yarn behind, and then, there you go, start making purl. So again, you know, after you complete four rows, you just have to repeat row number three and row number four until your desired row count. For me, 12 rows. However, you can actually um, change your mind. You know, you can pass a little bit of, um, you know, a uh, side marker or less. Either way, you know, it's not illegal to change your mind. You know what I'm saying? But um, because you're needing back and forth, okay, has to be done with even number okay because if you stop on uh odd number like okay 11th row which means either side is one row left less you know what i'm saying so has to be done on even number okay there you go i'm just repeating and this is right side so yarn front slide one and tug pull the working yarn towards the back and then start knitting okay so i think that's um close to my raglan marker okay after the uh, the marker i have to do knit two together and there's only one two three four five but now you have to think about the uh, increasing around the uh, raglan marker and one stitch before and after the raglan marker you cannot count for short row so now I have only four stitch before the marker. You know what I'm saying? So I will talk about it a little bit more when I get closer. Okay? So um, after the knit two together, I count four and then do the uh, increasing, then start, you know, short row again. Okay? Here it comes. So, knit until the yellow marker, yellow marker indicates 
fake double stitch. So there you go. Knit two together here. And then I'm supposed to knit five. But again, the one stitch before and after the raglan marker, that's stitch four increasing. So do not count for German show row. So now knit one, two, three, and four. And remember, I, I need four. Okay, and now increasing kicks in. So knit side increasing row number one. Okay, I am going to use make one right because it's right side of the marker. And I am going to use running thread. So pick up the running thread like that and hook onto left needle like that. And make sure the running thread is shifting towards to right. Okay, if I go like this, shifting left, so now you're in the position of make one right because the running thread is shifting right. And now you want to knit that extra stitch, okay? And you always knit the thread connect to next stitch. Okay, so the front thread is connecting next stitch, but the back thread is connecting previous stitch. So you have to knit front loop. That's make one right. Okay. It's a little bit tight, but take your time. And then knit the uh, next stitch which is last stitch before the marker okay and this is increasing not short row okay and slide the marker and now knit one then make one left because left side of the marker again pick up the uh, running thread hook on to left but now this way to make sure the running thread shifting towards to left and again, you have to knit the thread connecting, connecting next stitch, the front loop connecting previous. So the back loop, okay, is the one you have to knit. But the back loop means that's the uh, wrong side thread. So this is knit, but you have to put the needle straight in, just like a pearl, and then knit the back loop. That's make one left. And now you're done with the increasing, and you have to continue the short row. And this is knit five, and turn, okay? And then slide one pearl wise and do the uh, the same method as short row you know what i'm saying and now when you pass the uh, raglan marker okay you increase one stitch on increasing row number one and this is increasing row number two which is not increasing so just pearl okay this is easy because it was kind of, you know, knitting side. And now you're going to knit, oh, I mean pearl, until the uh, yellow marker, and then increase on wrong side, okay? So here comes pearl until the uh, yellow marker, and now you have to have German short roll, Pro two together. And same, right? After that, pro five. However, there's only four stitch left before the raglan marker. There you go. Because one stitch before and after you can't count, right? So you have to do increasing because this is row number one for this side. So orange marker, which means 
increase on plural side. Okay? Then both side is even. You know what I'm saying? So now you have to increase on wrong side and make, you know, one pearl left or right is all about knitting side. How you want to look knitting side. Okay? So the left side of the, uh, the orange marker on right side Right? I want to shift towards the left. Okay? If I see this on right side. Okay? But when I turn the work, that's going to be right side. But again, it's all about right side. So, even though it's on your right side of the marker, you have to do make one left on pearl, okay? So, hook on to left needle, and this is shifting towards to left, but that's okay, that's good. And now, you have to knit back loop because it's connecting to next stitch. But the back is knitting side. You know what I'm saying? It's so kind of knitting way, back loop from back, like that. This is make one left. It's a little confusing, but don't worry, you will get that. Anyway, make one left and purl, and then purl one, then slide the marker and purl one. And now here, from knitting side, should be make one right, so... I am going to do opposite, make one left pearl. No, make one right pearl. I'm sorry, I got confused. And now you have to put the needle straight in. This is make one right pearl. And then forget about the, uh, you know, uh, increasing. Start short row and I just did fifth pearl, so turn, and then jump on short row. And tuck the yarn and create the uh, fake double and start knitting. And now you're passing orange marker. This is going to be the uh, increasing row number two on orange side. So you just have to knit all knit. So sometimes, you know, the people think, oh, this is increasing row or not increasing row, but this is right side, so I have to increase. No, no, you got to think. You know, you have to think. You know what I'm saying? That's why I changed the, uh, you know, the raglan color, raglan marker color, so you understand better. The blue one, Increasing on right side, which is knitting side. The orange marker increasing on pearl side. You know what I'm saying? And now, um, here's row number three. Okay? So, the blue marker means you have to increase. And yellow marker is behind the, uh, the marker, the raglan marker. So, you don't have to worry about this time. You just increase, make one, right, because this is knitting side, right? You don't have to worry about counting because count starts after the knit two, knit two together. So make one left now. Then knit one. Then there we go, yellow marker, remove it, and knit two together. Then count starts for JSR. So one, two, three, four, five. And close to my side marker, I can do one more, but I decide this is done. This is the end. Okay? 
that means you have to go back the other side. You know what I'm saying? I told you it has to be even, right? So, again, turn and let's do last fake double stitch. Okay? And then start purling. There you go. And again, this is wrong side and blue raglan marker, which means this is row number two for increasing. So you're not going to do nothing, just purl until the other side. Okay? So here it comes. This is the uh, raglan marker and orange marker, which means increasing on pearl side. So this is make one left pearl, okay? And from back and like that, okay? And pearl one, slide the marker and pearl one and make one right pearl here. And again, after increasing, pearl until the uh, yellow marker. Pearl two together. And one, two, three, four, five. And again, this is my last turn. And create the uh, double stitch again. Now I am going to knit, okay, around. Now you start knitting front piece. So this has to be, okay, on right side. Because now I'm going to knit in round, which means never going to be uh, wrong side anymore. Okay? So... Right here, past the orange marker, this is, you know, uh, increasing on wrong side. So just knit. No increasing here. Go back to the uh, begin marker. But I am going to start knitting round, in round, right? So starting... Increasing row in round. But the first row, I have to do knit two together for both sides. And the orange side, okay, double fake stitches before the yellow marker because, you know, this was supposed to be pearl two together. So don't get confused, okay? So... Once you pass the uh, begin marker, reset everything, and there is the uh, uh, written pattern for increasing in um, in round, which is nothing really, just you know increasing on right side, you know, and the next row, you just have to knit all around. That that's about it. So nothing really, you know, new. But now you have to kind of count because, you know, the odd number of row, you increase, and even number row, no increasing. Okay? It's all knit, so you kind of have to think. And remove the marker and knit two together. There you go. And pass the, uh, you know, side marker. I don't need the uh, side marker anymore, so I'm going to remove the side marker that's just an indication for you know short row so i remove remove it and now the raglan marker this is for front finally front so i'm gonna increase because this is increasing row number one okay so there you go make one right And then you just keep knitting and keep increasing if it's necessary whenever you pass. 
Okay. It, whenever you pass the Raglan marker, you know what I'm saying, right there, and then the yellow uh, marker is, you know, after the the other side of the uh, side marker. So, here comes. This is the other side of the uh, front um, Raglan marker. So now, back piece and front piece increasing starts right underneath of the uh, neck rib for both sides. Okay? So, is this too much? I hope not. You know, I hope it's easy enough for you. But if you think this is too much, you add short row first and then start increasing. Okay? Either way, remove and now the knit two together, the fake double stitch is before the yellow marker, okay? So that's what you have to remember because this was supposed to be pro two together. There we go. And here, knit two together, remove the uh, marker and go back to begin marker. And after that, just keep knitting until the begin marker and here comes orange marker but now I'm knitting in round so it doesn't really matter you know orange or blue right so just make one right now because that was the right side of the marker so just in case I am going to change the marker to blue from orange and knit one and make one left okay so um again this is the uh, first row of increasing row in round and that's it i'm done with the uh, short row okay as you can see the back side is more raised if you want to go shorter or longer you go ahead you can change um, any way you like, okay? So, um, again, 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 um, it's really up to you uh, whether you want to add short row with increasing at the same time, okay? If you don't like it, add short row first, then start increasing, okay? So, keep knitting until uh, your desired length. Desired length means, you know, finishing the uh, yoke and the sleeve, both ends, has to meet under your armpit. So you have to knit long enough and big enough like that. Okay, that's the sleeve. And whenever you hit the uh, desired length for yoke, now you will separate the uh, sleeves from the body like this okay I repeat it 22 times 44 rows and count front and back stitch I have 82 plus 86 a uh, total of 168 which is 35 inches and I want to get bigger a little bit bigger body so I decide I'm gonna add 1.5 inches for both armpit area just whenever I connect the, uh, the front and back, which is about eight stitches each. Okay, so my total will be 38.5 inches. That's big enough for my, you know, um, body part. Okay, so this is the time uh, you can add more or less. It's really up to you. So knit until the first raglan marker right there and you can remove it okay and next section would be sleeves right so with the uh, scrap yarn contrast color would be better okay transfer all the sleeve stitches okay onto scrap yarn by the way uh, you should do this um, after you knit 
row number two. Okay. So I separate it and now I decide I am going to add new cast right here. Eight stitches for me, which is inch and a half worse. It's up to you. If you want to add a little bit more to make, you know, everything bigger, you go ahead. And I usually say um, even number, but you don't really have to, but I usually add even number. Okay, so I add eight stitches, okay, then connect with front. Okay, I just want to make sure, counting. There you go, one more. And now start knitting front piece to connect. That's it. And you got to do the same thing for the other side. Okay, so knit until third marker and do exactly the same thing for the other side of the sleeve. Don't forget to add new cast under your armpit. All right? And after this, it's super easy. Just keep knitting. Keep knitting. There you go. This is done. Two sleeves. And you have to use the uh, scrap yarn if you want to try it on. Okay? And knit until your desired length. And whenever you hit the uh, desired length, I am going to add a little bit more stitches just before the rip. And this is optional, usually 20 to 30%. If it's 20, it's going to be 220 stitches because I have 184 stitches times 1.2. If it's 30%, it's going to be 239. So it's really up to you. And I picked 20%, 220 stitches because this is, you know, multiple of four. My ribbing is two by two. And the reason why I do this, because 2x2 two two ribbon with the uh, one size smaller needle, it shrinks a bit like this. And, you know, if you don't like that effect, like, you know, if you're knitting for boys or, you know, you don't like the tightness around the, uh, the hip, you know, you should add 20 to 30% more stitches. Okay? So, uh... 220 minus 184, my current uh, stitches, is 36. The difference means I have to increase 36 stitches. So 184 divided by 36 is 5.25. So I am going to increase one stitch every five stitches. Okay? Okay. template and there is still you know um, swatch and gauging information and I'm gonna actually use this template to you know find out how to increase number 16 increasing with one with some one row okay so this is what I just talk about okay so the current stitch I have is 184 after I add eight stitches for each side of the armpit, right? And I pick 220, right? I want to increase just 20%, right? So uh, I put 184 current stitch and my total stitch count, 220. So Stitch increase I have to is 220 minus 184, so 36. And this frequency means if you increase 5.1, you know, increase one stitch every 5.1 stitches, you can make it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can increase evenly. Right, but there's no such a number 5.1 in knitting, right? So this set means if this number is not the primary number, you know, like a five, six, seven, you have to kind of think: should I go with five or should I go six? 
right? So you just have to, you know, check to make sure. So I'm going to go with 5. And there you go. If I increase one stitch every five stitches, I can increase 36.8. So 36, that's good. Okay. So if I actually uh, increase one stitch every four stitches, I'm going to actually increase 46. Exact. So um, 46, I, I could do that, but, you know, I don't need that many stitches so I'm gonna go with the uh, you know uh, increase one stitch every five stitches so it's really up to you okay so um, this is actually uh, 184 and 46 means 230 right gold stitch if I decide I'm gonna actually um, increase 46 stitches in one row. So frequency is 1. See, 25%. So if I increase 46 stitches with one row to make 230, that will be 25% increase. So yeah, I could do that too. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how you want to use this uh, template okay okay so uh, increasing start just repeat off knit five and make one right or make one left that's it and you just repeat knit five and make one right I choose make one right this time if you choose make one left or right, you know, just keep using same method, okay? Don't just use mixed, okay? Well, it doesn't really matter. And after that, you know, uh, knit one row and add in the uh, two by two rib with one size smaller needle. Then bind off with one size bigger needle. That's about it. I don't really have to show you everything, right? So, again, increase in one row. Next, just knit, then change the needle and add in the rib. Pretty much it. Okay? So, let's move on to sleeve connection. I, first of all, uh, transfer all the uh, sleeve stitch onto needle. And I put one clip-on marker just before last stitch and I am going to add one more and that will be um, just before last new cast knit up and I am going to add biggie marker right in the center of new cast do you remember new cast I add eight stitches right so I am going to knit up you know uh, above the uh, new cast which is eight, but I am going to uh, knit up in between new cast, right? So I would like to knit up eight new cast section plus one stitch. So I am going to knit up nine stitches total around that you know armpit new cast area okay and also i am going to knit up two extra in between last original and first new cast right there those two because if i start knitting you know right on the uh, new cast it's gonna be big gap and obviously the other side too okay and new cast and then two extra the other side too okay so let's do that so when i knit up that two extra if i use just a one thread like that it's going to be big gap anyway 
So I am going to borrow the thread, you know, two stitch down from the、uh, last original and that running thread. So now two threads on the needle. Then start knitting up. This is my first extra stitch knit up. And then second one, the, you know, use the、uh, running thread. And borrow the、uh, one stitch down to next stitch. So again, two s t i t c h on the needle and knit up. This is the,、uh, the second extra. Then start knitting up above the、uh, new cast. Again, my new cast number was eight, so I am going to knit up. Nine total, but first four knit up, and I am going to add my begin mark and then start knitting another four. Right, so four plus four is eight, but again, I am going to knit one more. Okay, one, two, three. Right there, one, two, three, four, and then just before the last, you know, the new cast knit up stitch,、um, put the clip on marker, then knit up. Then now, third and fourth extra knit up using that running thread again, you know, one stitch down also. Running thread, then third extra, and fourth extra, same thing, two down from the first, you know, the original stitch, then knit up. Okay, so how many、uh, stitches did I knit up?、Uh, four plus nine, so 13 knit up. Now you start knitting. Until the、uh, not the orange, the red clip on marker. So, why I need up two extra both sides? Because I want to close up the、uh, you know、uh, gap there. Okay, so to close or minimize the,、uh, the gap, the best way to do is the、uh, knitting up the、uh, extra stitches. And then next row decrease to close it. That's what I'm actually doing. Okay, so just knit until the other side, the red clip on marker, and I do SSK and knit two together. And same as the other side after the green clip on marker. Okay, SSK. And then knit two together to minimize the,、uh, the gap there. Okay? So, there we go. I come around the、uh, first clip on marker. And sometimes still,、um, There's a gap a little bit visible, but you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but trying to. Anyway,、uh, now SSK, the last original and first extra stitch, SSK. Okay, little loose, that's because you know, it's just connection part. And then second extra and first knit up stitch, knit two together. There you go. And knit until the、uh, green clim,、uh, clip on marker now, and you do the、uh, same thing. Okay? The orange is the uh, uh, begin marker. There you go. Remove the clip on and SSK. That's last 
new cast stitch and the third extra nira ssk slip slip knit and then the fourth extra and first original stitch knit two together that's it okay so after that knit until the begin marker and now i want you to find out three numbers okay the connection is done now i want to talk about the uh, sleeve decreasing shaping three numbers i i need the uh, current stitch count i have 73 stitches total goal stitch count i would love to have 36 stitches has to be multiple of four because two by two ribbon at the end and how you find out you just wrap the you know the the ribbon that you have like that the neck or body you know the rib and then just count and i pick 36 also the uh, desired length how many length you want to knit before the rib and for me 15 inches and with those three numbers i have to do the math again you have to decrease evenly by math template again and this is last math so be patient with me and number 17 here is the section you need to use okay the current stitch my number is 73 and my goal stitch count is 36 multiple of four right enter and total decreasing is 37 this math is super easy 73 minus 36 is 37 and stitch decreasing in one row is two everybody put two everybody decrease two stitch in one row and the length that i want to knit is 15 and enter so uh here's the thing if you do the math by yourself this is how you actually find out uh, first of all you have to find out how many rows you have to knit to reach your desired length so for me i have to actually knit 86 rows at least to reach 15 inches length right okay and the the frequency of the uh, decreasing is 4.6 Again, this is not the, uh, the prime number, so you have to pick either 4 or 5, right? So I'm going to actually pick 4. So I put the uh, 4 here. So look at this. If I decrease 2 stitches every 4th row, I only need 74, uh, 12 rows short, right? And that's too short. And if I actually decrease two stitches every five rows 92.5 okay that's too many rows okay i kind of want to have slightly shorter sleeve this time okay so in this case you know like the frequency number is close to in the center like 44.4 4.5 or 4.6 you have to put the number here 4 plus 5 you know not 4 not 5 so why don't i uh, put the number 4 plus 5 which is 9 and this is obviously uh, a lot more rows but 166 divided by 2 is 83 83 is close to my you know the goal number so here's the thing okay so decreasing two stitches every fourth and fifth row so the first decreasing is right on the fourth and next decreasing is ninth you know four plus five and next decreasing is 13 nine plus four and next is 18 plus 5 so just fourth and fifth back and forth and at the end has to be 
one stitch decrease on 85th row. You know what I'm saying? Because 37 is not the even number, right? And I want to reach 86th row, right? So after I decrease one stitch on right on the 85th row, next row is just knit, no decreasing. So here's the thing. If you do your math, do this, 73 minus 36 is 37, and you have to find out with the ratio, you know, uh, math, then 37 divided by 2 is 18.5. 86 divided by 18.5 is 4.6, so either 4 or 5, or every 4th and 5th rows. Okay? And here is the, uh, the method. So let's move on. Okay, so I knit three rows, okay? According to my plan, I am going to decrease two, stitch, two stitches on fourth row, okay? So this is end of third row, okay? Finish it. And soon as you start knitting fourth row, decreasing kicks in, okay? So knit one and knit two together. That's it for this side. And then knit around until last three stitches. And SSK and knit one. That's why two stitch decreasing, okay? And here comes end of the fourth row. You know, decreasing should take a place around the uh, begin marker because that's under armpit, so no one can see. SSK and knit one. That's it. Okay? And next, I am going to decrease two stitches on ninth row. That's it. And keep decreasing. And my plan, I am going to decrease only one stitch on 85th row. So either knit two together or SSK. Okay, I did knit two together. And after that, I knit one row to reach 86 rows. Then change the uh, needle to one size smaller needle and add in the, uh, you know, two by two ribbon, as many as you want, and then stretchy cast off because this is quite small wrist. So I want to do stretchy cast on with tapestry needle because it's a little bit more stretchier. Okay, super easy. Okay, purl two together. Like that. Do not drop any stitch off yet. Okay? And then knit the first one. Like it. Like that. And then drop that stitch off. And repeat. Purl two together. Do not drop any stitch off. And knit the first one. And then drop that stitch off. That's it. And do not pull the yarn too hard. So that's about it. Okay, this is it. So look at that beautiful uh, decrease in shape evenly. Okay, and I add a little bit, you know, the rib because I kind of want to have a shorter sleeve. So perfect German short row, raise the uh, back piece, and the body, the rib, it's not shrinking. That's because I add 20% of the uh, stitch at the bottom of the, uh, the body. It's perfect. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.